I'm thinking of how to phrase this one and this is my inspired rant shall we say from that other video or mini video that I did two minutes ago <laughs> and this ties into why I feel the screws are no longer fit for purpose no better do better as everybody says I'm absolutely knackered I barely had any sleep I had terrible insomnia so I ended up up till about 3 a.m. baking bread as you do so we know that currently three in ten children are suffering from mental health conditions and this is school going children, this was a study done across several schools and yet it's still a small study unit but the average is 3 out of 10 children suffering from mental health conditions and requiring long term medication. Now I view this as a societal issue and I can never get my tongue around that word societal, I don't know why. So I view it as a societal issue that starts in childhood and ripples on throughout life right the way for your adulthood. Now, I do want to touch on the biology here because I, the, the biology of human nature is very crucial to this video that I'm about to do. But I want to start with a quote first. And that quote is, give me the child before the age of seven and I will show you the man. And that was by Julius Caesar. And we know that the first seven years of a child's life is crucial for their development. It's when the key development takes place. And that's why the UK is one of the only countries globally that starts formal learning before the age of seven. So these formative years tend to be dedicated to learning at the child's pace. Discovery learning, kinesthetic learning, building those brain synapses the way nature intended. And our child's core development, that's mentally, emotionally and physically. And by spiritually, I'm not talking about global religions here. But that connection within themselves, you know, that inner connection and also that connection to the world around us too. Our society isn't designed for the benefit and well-being of children. Let's be honest, it's also not designed for the benefit and well-being of adults either. <laughs> Biologically, it would take millions of years for the human body to evolve in order to cope with modern day stresses and demands stresses and strains of modern day society and yes we've always had stresses and strains there we've always had this base of cortisol that comes through and helps us deal with certain situations so our cortisol and adrenaline however those situations were very different when we look back in time so when we were hunter gatherers it was shorter based it was only required while we were hunting our food or say we were under attack by like a lion or a bear or something like that that was when it was required the rest of the time, the body was able to recalibrate itself, for lack of better terminology. And then if we move slightly forward in time to when we were living within um, farming rural communities, smaller communities of a rural farming nature, an agricultural based community in that respect. And again, we would have, say, six to eight months of really, really intensive activity and then we would have the rest period of the dark half over the winter where we'd be able to rest and recalibrate. Modern day society doesn't allow for this. Modern day society doesn't factor that into anywhere. And not only is it adults that face these demands and stresses upon the body that modern society has brought into play, but also our children too. And their bodies have not adapted or evolved for the modern day stresses that they face. The bodies are not biologically designed for a learning by road system to be sat behind a desk. They're not, that's not their biological imperative. In fact, it is forcing a false narrative upon them and forcing them to behave in an unnatural way. So the environment isn't actually conducive to human behaviour. 2016, sorry, 2015, university researchers in British Columbia published a paper, looked into how social science is a skewed industry. It's a flawed area of science. And they based their research on what they termed as weird societies. <laughs> I know, weird societies, tell me about it. <laughs> but that actually stands for <laughs> Western Educated Industrialised Industrialised Rich Democratic Societies. I knew I'd get there. And these weird societies are not representative of human nature. And we live in a weird society. And that is because modern society doesn't reflect our biological nature. And when it comes to studying children, 
we focus it on the modern day view of what education should look like. The education that we tend to view and deem as normal. When in fact it's only around 180 years old. It's still in its infancy. And Carol Black actually points out that any zoologist will freely admit and state clearly that a conditioned zoo animal will not act the same as an animal in its natural environment. So to base studies based on an entire species of what we're seeing in, say, like SeaWorld, it's not going to give a true reflection of that species or the human nature. And that is what we're seeing in modern day society. And all social mammals develop social species traits and behaviours. And these are imperative, imperative, that are imperative to how we build those skills that we require for later adult life. And as mentioned before, our own species behaviour and traits took over a million years to form. It can't be changed in 180. 180 years isn't, isn't enough. Our own species traits took millions of years to develop, whereas modern day approaches are still in their infancy. And when we actually look at us biologically as a species, we were designed to live and grow and develop in small communities of mixed age groups, where children were a part of day-to-day -day life, integrated into the day-to-day -day life of the communities, and they learned in a hands-on fashion that would be guided by older children and the adults in the community. They worked as a village, a village mentality in that respect. And when we look back, we can also see that these children were allowed to play and give in to their biological impulses. Which is something that is very much missing in modern day society. We tend to want to hide and suppress their biological impulses so that they'll sit there still like trained robots in a classroom. We dampen the curiosity. We prevent them from exploring. Yet that is one of the key tools that our children have. Developmental learning, discovery learning kinesthetic learning, in developing those key skills that they're going to require later on in life. And when we also look at modern day indigenous cultures that are still bringing in those traditional beliefs when it comes to raising their children, we can see that they're much more in line naturally with the biological impulses and needs of the child. They're still very in touch with that. We've, we've kind of separated ourselves from that and we can expect a lot more from children than they're actually biologically capable of as a result. But when we study these sociologically, we can see that these communities, these tribes, these indigenous cultures, they have a deeper understanding, a deeper connection to the biological nature of humanity. And there's much that we can learn there. Some tribes will use stories and tales and myths and legends to convey messages that they wish the children to learn. Whereas others get them involved in the tasks of the community where they're learning alongside each other. Alongside the parents doing the jobs and the tasks at hand. They're allowed to follow their interests too. But one of the things that you regularly see in these tribal communities is that they acknowledge that the child's attention span is quite short. So that they are going to wander off and they will come back in their own time because that natural inquisitive personality trait of humans, that character trait that we all have, that imperative to learn and want to do more and to mimic our elders kicks in. So they'll naturally gravitate back and they will want to learn. And Carol Black actually goes into all that in much further detail. So you can head on over to YouTube, you can watch around there and you can see her talk in great detail about this topic. And interestingly, the indigenous approaches are tried and tested for millennia. Tried and tested for millennia. Keep that in mind, considering the infancy of modern day society. And another thing worth considering here that ties into this quite nicely, well, not nicely, <laughs> is that when children entered the school system, 98%, according to NASA, tested as genius. Yet by the time they leave education, that's dropped down to just 2%. But aren't we meant to be fostering intelligence, fostering that creativity? So, so what's going wrong? Where's this disconnect coming from? Because there's something there. And the education system seems to do the very opposite. We're throwing them into environments that are not actually conducive to human biology, the biological nature of children.